In this video, I'll give you a sense of what to expect from Compassion Focused Therapy, or CFT. And I thought the best way to do this might be to run through, session by session, what a CFT therapy plan might look like. Hi, I'm Dr. Stan Steindl. Welcome to Compassion in a T-Shirt, where I post weekly videos discussing all things compassion and self-compassion and cultivating a compassionate mind. Last week's video discussed what is CFT, and since then I've decided to do a little series unpacking that question a little bit more. By the way, there are a number of books offering more information about CFT and how it can be helpful for different concerns. Starting, of course, with Paul Gilbert's The Compassionate Mind. But there are several books by various authors describing the compassionate mind approach to a whole range of topics. I've included a link to all these books in the description below. Okay. So it can be useful to think of CFT in phases, with each phase having multiple sessions. To my mind, there might be four phases of treatment. Establishing the therapeutic relationship, psychoeducation regarding the evolutionary model of compassion, compassionate mind training and skills development, and putting compassion to work with life's difficulties. Establishing a therapeutic relationship is very important from the start. Session one might include aspects of assessment, such as the clinical interview and questionnaires to fill out. But while there is an information gathering component to this first session, it's equally important that the person experiencing CFT feels heard and understood, accepted, validated and valued and above all, feels safe. Session two then brings the information gathered together in a CFT formulation, providing a shared understanding of the person and their life and how they have arrived at the point they're at now. This helps to offer a rationale for the CFT approach, but also the formulation is designed right from the start to help de-blame and de-shame. Often people can feel like they're to blame for everything, but the formulation can help present things so that the person moves towards the recognition that in fact it's not their fault. Phase two, psychoeducation, regarding the evolutionary model of compassion, might involve another two sessions. Session three might focus on the evolved nature of our tricky brains, and this idea that the human brain was designed for us by evolution, not by us, and can cause us a lot of suffering, not least when our more primitive brain functions get caught up in loops with our higher order brain functions. A classic example might be when our old brain threat system gets caught in a loop with our new brain ability to imagine the future and we suffer from fearful imagining. Session four might introduce compassion, a sensitivity to suffering in self and others with a commitment to try to alleviate and prevent it. And that compassion in fact flows in three directions. Compassion for others, receiving compassion from others, and offering compassion to ourselves or self-compassion. Here, we might discuss compassion as a motivation and the various competencies of compassionate engagement and action. Session four might also involve discussing fears, blocks, and resistances to compassion. These might arise at any time in CFT, and we often work with these inhibitors to compassion. The third phase of CFT involves compassionate mind training and skills development and takes a very practical approach. Session five might start to work with body-based practices to create a sense of groundedness and stability, developing a compassionate posture, friendly facial expression, warm and friendly inner voice tones, and soothing rhythm breathing. Session six might move to using imagery, 
such as safe place imagery, to create a sense of safeness. It's important here to discuss safeness versus safety, how they're different, and how to cultivate groundedness, stability, and a sense of safeness. Session seven might involve creating an ideal, compassionate other. Again, using body-based practices and imagery to create an image of an ideal, compassionate other who might have a range of qualities, but including wisdom, strength and courage, and a caring commitment. We start to explore thoughts and reasoning, especially what helpful words of wisdom might the ideal compassionate other have to say about certain life difficulties. Session eight involves learning about, practicing, and gradually embodying the compassionate self, that part of ourselves that is also wise, strong, courageous, and committed to being helpful rather than harmful to ourselves and others. We might use chair work or a method acting approach here to help with embodiment. It's often so inspiring to hear the wisdom that arises out of these compassionate self practices. And finally, we have the fourth phase, putting compassion to work with life's difficulties. In session nine, we explore multiplicity, which really just refers to the idea that we are made up of different parts or multiple selves. We work towards differentiating these different parts especially angry self, anxious self, and sad self, and activate the compassionate self to understand and empathize with these different parts, and to provide validation, reassurance, and encouragement. In session 10, we might begin to work with the critical self. That is the part of ourselves that is critical, hostile, mean, or attacking of ourselves exploring the function of self-criticism, identifying how it's helpful and how it's unhelpful, and then bringing the compassionate self to help us move from self-attacking, self-hating self-criticism to compassionate encouragement. Session 11 and 12 might then work with shame, returning to some psychoeducation about shame, how it evolved, the adaptive function it might have played, and then understanding external and internal shame, where humiliation might fit in, and how shame might be related but also different to guilt, and then working with shame and shame memories through imagery and behavioral techniques, activating the compassionate self and gradually softening these feelings of shame. So, that's a fairly common session-by-session session CFT therapy plan. It depends, of course, on the presenting concerns, and there can be greater specificity around specific problems. And sometimes in CFT, we might talk about other topics, such as assertiveness, forgiveness, and relationships. And often, there is a final session where we might review therapy, envision a compassionate future, anticipate trouble spots, and plan ahead for practicing the three flows, being compassionate towards others, opening ourselves up to receiving compassion from others, and practicing self-compassion. I hope this has been helpful, perhaps given you an idea of what to expect with CFT. Whether you're a therapist yourself using CFT or someone who might wish to experience CFT as part of your own therapy, let me know your comments and questions below. May CFT be for you, like it has been for me, a life-changing part of your compassionate journey.